everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM, life, and some true crime content here on this channel. So if any of that is your jam, make sure that you subscribe if you wanna stick around. Make sure to like this video if you like it, and if you don't, that's fine too. <laughs> But in today's video, I am going to be bringing you anti-MLM content, so because of that, I do have to say, just as a disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes and just my opinions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the whole MLM reps calling themselves influencers. If you've been here for a long time with my anti-MLM content, you know that when MLM reps call themselves influencers, or that what they're doing is affiliate marketing, it grinds my gears to, I, I, I can't even think of a good analogy, but it grinds my gears and it really irks me and it bothers me because they are not influencers and it is not affiliate marketing. There is a significant difference between the two. And I feel like I've said that quite a number of times on this channel, but I guess I have to make a video dedicated to it in case anyone tries to tell me yet again that they're an influencer. This was kind of sparked from my video. If you watch my reactions video to the MLM rep that was on TikTok recruiting people, this actually came from that particular video because she has been calling herself an influencer. She tiptoes around what she actually does for a living. And if you guys know, it's very apparent when someone is in an MLM because they won't say anything about what company they work for or what they sell. They try to hype it up enough until they can slide into your DMs or you slide into their DMs and ask them what they're doing. And that's when they pitch you and they try to pitch you the dream and whatever else that they're trying to pitch you. But before we proceed, I did just want to say, because a lot of you have been asking me about the background that I've been filming in. So I've actually been filming at the front of our store because it's easier for me to see my script on the actual computer, which is literally right here. It's easier for me to go off of my script when it's right in front of me like this than when I'm, if you guys remember the black curtain. So if you go back this way, the black curtain is right over there and all of this is our store. So this side is the CBD side, and then this side is like the regular vape section. So I just, I had to put that in there because a lot of you have been asking me. <laughs> and a few of you asked if I could do like a tour, but I'm just gonna say that's, that's what it is. This is our, our family owned and run business and everything like that. But anyway, now that I got that out of the way, <laughs> let's talk about, I guess, why this bothers me so much. The reason why is because if you don't know my background, I actually, uh, it'll be seven years ago this month that I rebooted my blog. It's Jersey Girl Texan Heart. That's kind of, I guess you can kind of consider that my brand name. I use that for, for everything. That's what I use when I file taxes and everything. I use that, that's my brand name. So with that being said, I have been doing this for almost seven years. And I have been in the industry, I was blogging way before that as well. I was blogging as early as 2010. However, I got into a relationship where he wasn't supportive of my blog and he refused to take my pictures. So it just kind of dwindled away, even though it was something that made me it made me excited because I always worked, you know, the boring office jobs. I always had jobs that I wasn't really a fan of. And because I was a business major and a fashion minor, fashion was kind of my creative outlet. I know that it doesn't look like it right now on camera because I'm always in t-shirts and jeans, but that's literally what I wear to work every single day. But I was always really into that. And I was always really into expressing my, you know, outfit of the day kind of a deal. And then also I've used my blog as a way to kind of talk about other issues that I've had, whether it be in my life or in the world, or that's actually, I, for the first time I told my story, my epilepsy story on my blog very many years ago. And that was kind of when my blog took a little bit of a turning point where I would still upload my outfits, but I would talk about actual things that are on my mind, just really candid. I will say that there is a ton of work that goes into blogging and I'm gonna also say influencer because I know that that's the newest term and that's an actual, I guess you can say career path that a lot of 
younger people would like to go into and because it's a way that you can be creative and it's a way that you can put yourself out in the world and do your own thing but it is a ton of work I rebooted my blog in 2013, just like I said, and I did it as just a hobby. I did it because I was working an office job and I just wanted something that I could be proud of and something that I could have fun with. So I did that and it turned into more of a hobby. I started getting campaigns. I started getting sponsorships. I started getting brand deals and that kind of a thing. And that's when I realized holy crap, I can actually make money from this. And because I was always still working my full-time job, I never went full-time with my blog. So I never made my blog my career or becoming an influencer my career or anything like that. And my following is not that big. So of course I would not be able to make it a, a full-time gig, but it's something that I enjoy doing and I make decent money from it so whatever and it was a hobby that turned into a side hustle basically is is <laughs> what we're gonna what we're gonna call it and then i decided to hop onto youtube and kind of tried out the youtube thing for a few years and it didn't really work out all that well and then i started again back in september and we are here today still creating videos for fun i mean don't get me wrong i do get monetized so i do get money from it but I would still be doing this even if I wasn't monetized because it's fun. It's a way that I could be creative. The reason why this bothers me is because being an influencer is not just selling products. Being an influencer is so much more. If you guys ever want to have like a whole entire video or something like that about the behind the scenes of the blogging industry or something, maybe I'll make a video because there is, there is a lot more that goes into it than just buy this because I'm getting sponsored, or here's my affiliate link, buy this because I have a code. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot more that goes into it, especially being an influencer on, I would say on YouTube especially, because there's a lot of, there's a lot more, I would say there's a lot more that goes into making YouTube videos than there is with the stuff that I do on my blog because it is more time consuming. But that's just my personal opinion. Other people might have a different opinion or a different experience. It's really, it all depends on the person and what I guess their skill set is when it comes to different editing software, that kind of thing. But anyway, it bothers me that these MLM reps use the term influencer because a lot of people who are younger, they think of being an influencer is this career. And because it can be, it can be a career. It really can be. And I think that they're using that to their advantage because so many people want to be an influencer. Not everybody, not everyone wants to be an influencer or a blogger or you know, a, a YouTuber, content creator, whatever you wanna call it, whatever you wanna call it. And I understand that. But there are a lot of people out there who see this and they see the glamorous side of it and they want in on it. Here's the difference between an MLM rep and someone who is an influencer, a blogger, a content creator, whatever. You make your own rules. Of course, you have to abide by the regulations and stuff like that, but you don't have to sell someone else's product if you don't want to. If the company that you work for, the MLM reps, comes out with fizzy sticks or something like that, an influencer does not have to promote it an influencer has campaigns that they can pick and choose from. A lot of times the influencer industry gets a really bad reputation, which is why I really hate that term. But the reason why is because there have been a lot of shady people in the industry who have done things and haven't disclosed sponsorships or anything like that. And it's quite obvious that they, it was a sponsored, you know, video or post, whatever. So I understand that there is corruption in every industry. So not every influencer is going to be a good one. So I'm not gonna sit here and even lie to you guys about that. But they get to pick and choose from campaigns. They get to pick and choose what resonates with their brand and their audience. And a, a lot of brands are starting to actually become a little smarter with this and they're starting to really, really be picky about who they choose for their campaigns because you don't want someone just promoting a product when you don't know if that's their actual target audience. But the blogger or influencer, 
they don't have to abide by a specific rule. If they don't want to do a campaign, they can say no. They can either respectfully decline or if they really feel offended by what the offer is, they can, some of them can get a little, a little petty. Um, me personally, I prefer to keep it more professional. You also do not have to recruit people into your team. You do not have to recruit your friends and family for them to become your competition and then have them in your downline so you can make money off of them in your downline. That's not how it works. You don't have to do that as an influencer. You are your own, I guess you could say your own entity. You are your own brand. This is your, it's almost as if you were to have like how we have our own CBD brand, right? It's our own brand. We created it on our own. So that's the same thing with an influencer, blogger, whatever. That's your own thing. It, it, it is. You don't have to pay into it. You don't have to pay to start up. They pay you. And this is one thing that the reps always get wrong because they try to say, oh, well, you're only getting paid a little bit for one campaign or something like that. Or you're only getting paid like a couple of bucks. Let me just tell you, with my very small following, the campaigns that I've done in the past, I've gotten a couple hundred dollars for with my small following. There are bloggers out there who can get into the double digits of thousands of dollars for one little plug or for one post or two or three, what, that was four, sorry, on Instagram alone. Does a lot go into it? Yes, because you do have to get a photographer, you have to get someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to editing, or if you're you know, a jack of all trades, you could do it yourself. You, you don't have to be a pushy salesperson and recruit people into your team or into your downline. You're not going to make more money if you recruit people under you. You're, you're, it's, it's just, you're not gonna make more money that way. The way that you're going to make money on these sponsored, con sponsored content or ads or something like that, you make that money. There is a fee up front, and then if they, for some reason, give you a discount code or if they give you an affiliate link, then you get commission off of that too. So not only are you getting paid, but you're also getting a commission that you don't have to be annoying about. You don't have to hit a certain rank, whatever you wanna call it. Another thing is influencers are able to be very creative. They're able to create a brand. They're able to do what they want with their brand. Whereas with MLM reps, yeah, they can make little infographics here and there, but they still have to abide by their company. They still have to do that. They can't, they can't steer away from the regulations that their company has. Because not only do, it, do they have to answer to you know, the FTC and the government, but they also have to answer to their company and the people who run that company. So you don't really have that creativity. You, you really don't. You don't have that ability to be creative in a way that you could be if you're creating content. It's completely different. So when it comes to them trying to call themselves that what they're doing is affiliate marketing, sweetheart. Being in an MLM is not affiliate marketing. I'm gonna pop up in a, a little graphic up on the screen. I'm actually gonna pull it up on my computer right now too. But if you look at this graphic, step number one is the customer. And a customer will look for something through social media or even on Google because some influencers, they do pop up in Google when you try to search for something. And then number two, they go to your website because they find your website and they're like, oh, let me go to this website. Let me check it out. Then number three, the customer purchases a product through your affiliate link and that affiliate link gets tracked and depending on what the customer buys how much they buy of buy of whatever they're you know buying geez i said that word too many times you get a commission you get a percentage of what that customer bought through your affiliate link so literally i ha i do have affiliate links on my blog so let's say because i'm an affiliate with amazon let's say that 
I'm posting on my blog and I talk about how, oh, I got this, this skirt from Amazon. Oh, by the way, my camera I got from Amazon, which I didn't, but let's, we're just using this as an example. I got my camera from Amazon. I got this from Amazon. If you click on those links and if you buy something, let's say that you buy a hundred dollars worth of, of product on Amazon. I get a percentage of that all because you clicked on my affiliate link. Did I have to sell anything to you? Did I have to, uh, did, did I have to recruit you into my team or anything like that? No. Hey everyone, editing Monica here. I am so sorry that I have to keep doing this in all of my videos, but I keep forgetting things in my videos. I don't even know how I skipped over this, but when it comes to affiliate marketing, you don't have to pay to play, so to speak. You don't have to sign up for anything. Like you don't have to buy a starter kit or anything like that. The only thing that you have to do is apply for the program and then you'll get approved and then you'll either get a, unique code or you'll just have links and stuff like that that have like a specific tracking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It just has tracking in there so that it, it's unique to you or your username, whatever. And on top of that as well with affiliate marketing, you do not have to hit a certain rank, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have to hit a certain rank every single month and you don't have to purchase your own product in order to keep your rank. Does that make sense? And you also don't have to keep a personal volume. So that is another difference that a lot of people apparently in the MLM industry don't know. But anyway, let's get back to the video. But that's what I'm saying is that affiliate marketing is so different from MLM reps and what MLM companies do. It's, it's honestly, it's so, so, so different. And I think the reason why a lot of these MLM companies are starting to call themselves different things is because like I've, the other day I had someone recommended to me and it was someone else who was talking about why they're anti MLM. And um, gosh, what was her name? I can't remember her name. Uh, okay, well, I'm really sorry. I was gonna try to give her a little bit of a shout out, but I can't remember what her name was. But anyway, they were talking about how they're anti MLM and why they're anti MLM. And they also said in the video that it was a trending topic. And I remember a few weeks ago, actually, I think it's probably like a month ago now, but Natalia Taylor, she actually talked about her Mary Kay experience. And she said the same thing, that anti-MLM is actually trending on YouTube, that there's been a lot more content being pushed out that's anti-MLM content. So I found that kind of interesting. And I was thinking that maybe, just maybe, with the rise of the anti-MLM community, maybe they're starting to get a little nervous and maybe that's why they're trying to steer away from being called an MLM rep because all of us tag anti MLM. So if they say, oh, I'm an influencer, I'm not in an MLM. I had someone tell me that Mary Kay wasn't an MLM. Um, I was in Mary Kay. It is most definitely an MLM and it is still most definitely an MLM. But that's, that's just the thing is that it's, it's one of those things where, you know, they're just trying to do the runaround. They're trying to find a different way of being able to shill their product. At the end of the day, if you're an influencer or content creator, this is your own thing. This is your own actual business. Whereas with an MLM, it's not your own business. It is not your own brand. It is not your own thing. You don't, you don't have control over, I said this, I forget which video I said this in, but I said this in one of my videos. If, if you were really a small business owner, let's say that you work for one of the makeup MLM companies, they come out with a lipstick, you can't choose the colors that they come out with. So how is it really your own business? I mean, being an influencer, you can't, unless if you have your own cosmetics brand, you can't do that either, but at least, you, as an influencer, you have control over the cam the campaigns that you do. You have control over the, ne the negotiations. Wow, why can't I talk today? Because you can negotiate your prices. You can, a lot of times there is like a flat rate that some influencers will have, but there is a little wiggle room most of the time. You are able to negotiate. You do have to know your worth because a lot of companies are taking advantage of a lot of different influencers and bloggers and stuff like that. If you are someone who is looking to go into the influencer industry, there's actually a really good book. I think I have it with me here. Um, it's this one. 
It's called Influencer and it's by Brittany Hennessy. I actually read this, even though I've been in the industry for a really long time. Uh, shout out to my friend Ellen from Ask Away Blog. She's, she actually sent this to me for Christmas, but um, she's my blogger bestie. But that's a really good book to read if you're trying to get into the industry. That book was able to give me a little bit of more motivation. I knew a lot of things that were actually already in this, but it did give me a little more motivation and it did also kind of explain a lot of the numbers and the money aspect uh, when it comes to the industry. So that was really helpful, but it's, it's completely different. MLM reps are not influencers and it's not affiliate marketing. There is a difference, a significant difference. And I know that it's because it's, it's you know, the anti-MLM community is getting bigger and bigger. So I feel like they're probably starting to feel the heat a little bit. They're starting to get a little nervous and I really truly think that's why they're doing the things that they're doing. I know that influ the influencer industry already has a bad reputation and I don't want MLM reps taking over the term influencer and giving it an even worse reputation because not all influencers, not all bloggers, not all content creators are bad. Are there some out there that have done some shady sh Yeah, absolutely, but there are a lot of good ones out there and it is a creative outlet. And I'm pretty sure at this point in time, I'm pretty sure if you're a fashion major or a fashion minor, having a blog on your resume is actually a really good thing to have because it's a good way to actually having a blog helped me when I put it on my resume for one of my jobs. But having that, it shows that you, you know how to market, you know how to do social media marketing, which that's an actual thing nowadays is being a social media marketer. So you can put that on your resume and you could put all of these things that you were taught from just having a blog. I know that I probably did a really bad job explaining it in this video, but I think it's because I get so heated about this subject and I know that you can't tell I'm actually pretty calm today. But I, I just, I get so mad with the subject when these MLM reps try to say that they're influencers. You're not. I cannot say it enough. You are not. <laughs> but anyway, if you have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, support me on Patreon, check out my merch, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.